Welcome to another episode of the Junk Shore Show. We are here with the man, the myth, the legend, the future NFL Hall of Famer, Aaron Baum. Sir. How's it going? Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. So, I just first I want to talk about how someone that is a D1 athlete, you are a D1 college athlete, also is an exceptional hockey player, has hobbies and does work for racing teams and manages to do all of these things while also being a D1 athlete. How the fuck do you do all of those things? Um, that's just, uh, you make time for things that you're passionate about. I think, you know, there's a lot of balancing time. Football takes up most of my time, you know, from about like seven ish in the morning to seven ish at night is mostly football and school related. That's With a long time. Film, uh, treatment, practice, obviously, you know, uh, lifting, all kinds of things like that. But you just kind of make time for stuff. You still have those desires. You're doing at practice. Okay, I want to go home and be on the racing rig. Okay, I can't wait for that. So you go home and get your schoolwork out of the way and do that. Um, and then obviously I'm in town for a little bit. I'm packing as much hockey as I can. Uh, four, four nights a week, subbing on every team. You know, I'm yeah, wearing I'm a sure, different jersey I'm sure every week. I'm sure your coach would love to know. That you're oh, yeah he, does, yeah, he doesn't know that. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't know. know. Yeah, he doesn't know. But he scored a few goals last week. You know, yeah. he'd be happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I feel good about it. It's it's fine, nice. he's, he's good to go. <laughs> well, so... Does any of does anything that you do outside of this do you think it gives you because a lot of a lot of people that talk sports like to say that when you play multiple sports, especially growing up, they kind of feed into each other. Is Absolutely. there anything that you take from one sport and are able to bring into football that you think kind of gives you a leg up? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I started out with my dad got me into uh, into little league baseball when I was really young. I played about six or seven seasons of that. Mm -hmm. Um, that obviously got coordination and throwing and being able to catch things and just be more adept at sports as a whole. Um, and then playing hockey and then hockey got too expensive. Um, as you get to like the travel age, oh, yeah. it, oh ice time is oh, yeah. ridiculously expensive. Yeah, and high school tough. football was free. Um, so I played that and, you know, it's kind of the coordination and utilizing certain movements. Like I get a lot of torque when I kick from, I think from throwing, like throwing and water polo, I played water polo in high school as well and throwing baseball get a lot of torque in my core and rotation and stuff like that. get a lot of that power. I think from that, that a lot of other guys can't maybe generate. Um, water polo is like treading water the whole time. So oh, yeah. I pull I pull certain things I would never. from other sports. I, I love water polo, I man. I would never. I, people would drown me. I'm a small person. <laughs> I'm a small you person. You look good in a Speedo, though. I mean, that's you know, what we, I mean. I was, it, I, it would compliment me as a human well, but like <laughs> probably not look great. It, yeah. would, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, a, they'd be like, why is that small person running around in a speed? I don't understand. <laughs> um, well, that's awesome. So last season was your first season of D one ball. Correct. What is, what was the big difference? What, what's the jump up in competition? Like talk to someone if, if, you know, somebody was looking to transfer from, even community college not doing anything to a D1 program. Sure. What is that like? What does that look like? Um, well, I kind of had the both routes. I went the NAIA route, which mm -hmm. is similar to junior college. I played a season of football with a small school in Missouri. And I went the community college route and it was doing nothing. It is working and still trying to grind. The biggest difference I have to think is just the level of pressure as it doesn't involve just you, right? Our coaching staff is pretty new. They came from around the country to come coach for this school to move their families, their kids. They give you a scholarship before they even see you play. There's a level of you have to perform because if you suck and you end up missing a couple of field goals in a couple of games this season, they might have to look for a new job and they have to move their families. And this big weight of things in your apartment you can go home to every night that they pay for and your scholarships and everything. It's just a lot of – and it comes as a kicker, it comes out of six kicks a day. Right at the end of practice, you have six kicks. You go two for six, three for six, not looking too good for you. It's not a great, it's not a great day. Not a great look. And you go home and you're worried about that because they can pull your scholarship for performance, ac uh, academics, and of course, you know, off field, you know, legal stuff. But number one is a performance. You know, you got to cut guys. You know, they're not making the team or whatever, and you don't want to be one of those guys. But just that pressure of that big weight on you was was my biggest one. Obviously, of course, then the the schedule. Right, there's a very rigorous. Breakfast check, mandatory breakfast. You have to go and get checked in or otherwise get in trouble. You have lifting, meetings, school, treatment after lifting if you're injured, treatment after practice and before, practice for two and a half hours. Then you can kind of go home and do stuff and do schoolwork and whatever you have to do. Mandatory study hall is another hour in that as well. 
get get used to squeaking in 15 minute naps when you can because it is very very tiring but that's probably about the biggest jump is that weight of having things that you don't normally think about mm-hmm. you meet the coaches meet their families after games and you're like oh i kind of their livelihood depends on me they, they might have to move their kid from school system to school system if they have a rough year here and might get you know released from the school kind of thing so there's a lot of pressure and of course you want to make your kicks you want to oh, win yeah. games well, you want to do well for yourself and whatever anxiety you put yourself on your, your own biggest critic but that's probably the biggest thing is just that rigorous schedule and the super super heavy weight of other people. So what was what was first season of D one like? How did it was you? Amazing. Did you love it? I loved it. There was there was moments training camp battle with with the other kicker I, I came in against the incumbent. Every day battling, making the best out of yourself, and and the pressure, like I said, comes out of six kicks. You know, you move your whole life five six states away and. You bring your belongings, and I, I've done it. I finally made Division One. I'm on a scholarship, but they never see me play. So there's this big thing of they go based on video, and if you don't live up to your video, ugh, you know what I mean. There's that. But once you get the starting job, and you finally get comfortable with your snapper and your holder and the team, you know the te- uh, they know your name, and you go to their house and hang out with them, become a family really quick, which I needed at the time in my life, kind of going through some, some difficult things. It was amazing. You know, I had, a, I had a really good season. I missed a few kicks that I, I wish I had back, of course, but I made some kicks that I think were really amazing. Really thankful that I went in and had a great game where I threw a pass in the end zone too, which is pretty cool. It's my long snapper. That was like a cool connection with us. But I loved every minute of it, and I cannot wait to report back August 1st. August 1st is, is we're that back is, and that then we're, is the we're day. grinding there, again. The, the other position groups are already back. They're already doing the 5.30 a.m. runs, and oof, thank God I'm not there to <laughs> do that. Our coach said that's, uh, like, that's a really early. <laughs> uh, the, I, the, I, the default iPhone alarm gives me PTSD from the last training camp, but our head coach was like, specialist, you guys can report August 1st to get your own work in on your own. We trust you. But I go in the group chat and see 5.30 a.m. running, and I'm like, well, thank God I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> That's, all, that's really early for yeah, a run. It's a little early. It's a little, little early. The, the grass is still wet from the dew. 5.30 comes, comes quick. Oh, it does. <laughs> that, it, that it does. So in transitioning from, from doing the, the junior college, community college, not doing anything, D1, let, let, let's, let's flaunt a little bit. What was the longest kick you made this, this season? Um, well... I've said it in a previous interview, but I'll repeat it again. Yeah. I never attempted field goals in my career before I came to this school. Okay. In high school, I attempted extra points and kicked off half the time. And in my first college in uh, Missouri, I only punted. And my specialty is field goals. And just what are circumstantial reasons I never got to do that. Um, so my, my second ever career attempt in my lifetime was a 55-yard field goal against Tennessee Tech. Which I ended up making it. And I hit pure laces, by the way, like laces out, Dan. I hit oh. square laces. My long snapper doesn't want to hear that I say that, but it's Ray true. Ray Finkel all day. All day. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, yeah, laces out's a real thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, my longest kick was 58 yards this season, which tied the second longest in school history. The, the 55 was the third longest. Okay. Got that. Already second in, longest, 58. So I'm coming, coming for the number one spot. <laughs> I'm coming for him. I think the guy who holds it is like an insurance guy in my town. So I'm coming for him. <laughs> I'm coming for that that 62 yard he had back in the day. So I think I can definitely break that. But I just recently got my new personal best, just, you know, practicing by myself. It mm-hmm. was 72 for the longest time, 72 yard field goal. Longest time. I just broke that 75 yarder last week. Okay. Um, so I think, I think we're going to break some over 60 this season is so when you're, you're lining up for a field goal, what, what do you do to kind of focus up? What do you do to quiet your mind? Mm-hmm. Because there's, I'm sure there's people yelling at you at the line of scrimmage. Absolutely. I'm sure Absolutely. there's this distraction and that distraction. What, what, how do you kind of find yourself and center yourself in that moment? Um, something me and my kicking coach, um, Stephen Yaffe, have worked on a lot um, and things he's brought up to my attention is kind of a sniper mentality and a 10 seconds of pure focus mentality. So you get a- that anxiety, teams driving down the field, okay, we're not in punting range anymore, we're, we're in field goal territory. Okay, second down, third down, okay, ooh, here we go. You know when it's coming, you see that drop ball on third down, you know it's mid 40 yard field goal, long 40, something like that. Okay, here we go. Take your steps out. Jog into the field, analyze the flags. My holder, his name's Lewis. Him and I are, are like some best, him and I are like pretty much best friends. And I look at him, he gets a spot. And when I look at him and I give the nod to him, I just go based on him. I don't have any thoughts. It's just all watch the ball hit his hands and approach. There's no overthinking because I, I tend to overthink things. I've kind of worked on getting that out of my system. Mm. 
but it says your operation time is 1.3 seconds. So you have 1.3 seconds from snap to kick to be so laser focused on a quarter size spot on the ball at a target 50 yards down the field with the wind going like crazy and stuff. And of course, the line yelling at you. Oh, yeah. And I you hear all that. You know, you hear, you hear people say, I don't even hear it. Crowd noise is different. There's crowd noise, but I can, I can talk like I'm talking to you on the field. Mm hmm. When you're in that when you're in that mode, but you can hear everything and everyone else is saying. There were against there was a game against uh, Eastern Illinois where they were screaming all game at me. Wide left, the entire I heard their section, their crowd section, their sideline, their line. It was definitely loud. They're yelling, and I was like, no shot. Like you, know what I mean? <laughs> I, you, you kind of mm -mm. if I'm gonna miss, I ain't missing left. So I don't want to <laughs> give you that. You know what I mean? But it just that deep breath, breathing exercises, mm -hmm. work on lowering your heart rate. Because you tend to go really fast, that adrenaline kicks in, and your tempo is kicker's best friend. Yeah. Too slow, too fast, affects your hips, affects your body positioning. So if you can, okay, put put your motions aside for 1.3 seconds and just be normal pace to the ball, you're going to be fine. Yeah. So if you were looking, and, and it sounds like you are, to transition from D1 ranks to a professional team, ideally, hopefully, we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed, you, they're going to make you focus on one of those. They're going to either make you focus on field goals yep. and just being the kicker or punting. Your preference is field goals all day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you also punt for the team you're on now? Um, I have shared punting duties, um, but I, my specialty lies with field goals. It's kind of just kind of a either have it or you don't. And I've worked on kicking so long that I'd warm up with punting with my dad. So I'd, I'd get work in punting just to warm up the leg. So right. I've kind of gotten okay at it. But field goals is by far my specialty. Uh, anyone else will tell you. Like, I can hit a good punt, you know, but it's I'm not as con consistent as I'd like to be. But field goals is by far my bread and butter. Okay. So you're thinking some over 60s this season. I'd think? like to. I'd like, if my coach <laughs> gives me the green light and the right scenario, I made the 58 with about five to go on it. So that's obviously, you know, low 60s. Yeah. Um, and I, I tagged him in my post. I posted a 75-yard field goal I was telling you about on Twitter. I tagged him in it because – in some press conferences, he goes, uh, I don't even listen to Aaron anymore. Aaron's like, I can go 70 yards this way and 65 yards this way. And I'm like, well, I, I can. You don't have to joke about it. I can. So I tagged him in that just so I know, listen, man, like, we can, I'm not joking. Like, we can make this. But um, hopefully it gives me the, the green light for some long ones and maybe in a end of a half scenario, maybe even a game winner from, you know, 60s. That'd be, that'd be ideal. Yeah, that sounds great. So how did you guys do as a team this season? Oh, we did fantastic. Like I said, we had a new coaching staff come in. The old Murray State apparently was a not so great uh, chemistry, not not so great of a atmosphere. Um, you know, they're kind of a losing team. You know, in the two thousands, you know, they were a powerhouse in the nineties, early two thousands, and then kind of went on a on a slump. And we're looking to make a change, and they brought in a, a coach that's that's really good and a great coaching staff, and re sparked the guys up who are on the team who are sophomores or juniors who have been with part of the old team and saw the the, the atmosphere that they had built. It's not so great. And now it's a great atmosphere. He's a, our coach is a great um, team team guy, great family oriented dude, mm -hmm. and he makes gets the best out of us. We went five and zero this year, and then we lost our last two against really really good teams in really close games. So it could have gone either way. One of those games we lost on a game winning field goal. It could have gone either way, um, but to go five and zero for the first time since like the '90s, you know, for a team that's Little Murray State, and a, with a COVID year and people being injured and getting sick and not being able to practice like you'd like to because of COVID protocols and things mm -hmm. like that. I think we did phenomenal and we got a lot of hype behind us. We, we got a lot of some positive rankings and FCS rankings. And I think we're going to be a force to re-reckon with this season, but I definitely think that the change of culture um, that our coaching staff has brought in has sparked a, a big, a big positive influence in us. That's awesome. So this year is going to be a little different than last year in the sense of you'll be able to kind of do more, as a team internally absolutely than than last season I think that's gonna be a precursor to a lot of really good things coming yeah. down the road or we yeah i think um we did a good job of of maintaining COVID protocols and having our lifting groups and your contact tracing groups and masks everywhere and you can't have really any team bonding things but we try to figure out ways to communicate with like iphone games and Team bonding things just to make that – that's a, that's the biggest part of, of a team thing is just the culture of people loving each other and doing things for your brother. And that's a big thing we promote is love your brother. That's one of our, our sayings. So now we're able to get the masks off, go outside, have a pickup kickball game and coaches on the grill, you know, <laughs> flipping burgers and stuff. I'm, I wish I could be there for that. That's the part I wish I could be there for is right. the fun stuff. Obviously not the running but not the fun the running, stuff. Not the running but the fun stuff. Of course. Eat yeah. hamburgers. You know, who's, who yeah. doesn't want to do that? So I definitely think – 
And plus winning brings a positive energy in the locker room anyway. Right. You lose and people are down and, and this sucks and whatever, but you're winning and everyone's having a good time and dancing in the locker room, coaches coming in having a good time. So I think that being together and having the COVID stuff get kind of tapered down a little bit and we're able to kind of uh, mesh better mm. is only going to help us. That's awesome. So before we get into more, I want to I want to pivot away real quick into more NFL conversation into more professional because that's what we're that's what we're hoping we're hoping to see Aaron kicking the balls on Sundays absolutely because that's we think that's that's a thing we think that's a thing I see I see the Bills I see we're repping yep. Bills Mafia absolutely we were talking before about Josh Allen <laughs> we we're talking about him my man yeah he's he is well why don't you just just say something to Josh right now Let Josh him know. if you're watching I'm a huge fan I have a tattoo on my ribs of the same artwork on your cereal box. Your cereal box came out after, so I don't want to kidding. I, I ripped your, your, your image, but I'm a huge Josh Allen fan. I wore his Josh Allen jersey at my dad's memorial. We wore all Bill's stuff. It was like a celebration of life, so we wore a bunch of Bill's stuff. I'm a huge Bills fan. Go Bills Mafia. We're going to the bowl this year. That's all feels I got to say. He feels it. I do. So what is your... What is your ideal situation to go into? Would you like to go into, let's say, in Atlanta where it's indoor, climate controlled, you don't have to worry about mm -hmm. the wind. Buffalo, hard place to kick. A lot of wind, lot, very cold. Mm -hmm. You know, what What would your ideal scenario be if That's you got That's really, to... really tough. Yeah. I, I would love to kick for the Bills. It's been a dream of mine since I was a little kid. I have a little Halloween picture of me as a Bills kicker back in the day. Um, for personal just kicking ability, I would mm -hmm. love to be indoors. Of course, anywhere indoors, at least eight games a year, you know, there's no variables, right? That's one of the biggest things. One of my kicks I missed this year, the flags are blowing this way, all warm up, the ball's breaking with the wind. I'm in the game. I aim just like how I aimed. First five yards, it blows, hits a gust of wind, goes the other way. There's a shot on me when they, they have a tight shot on my face. I'm like, you're kidding. If I can get wind and rain and, and snow out of the equation, by all means, as a kicker, that's obviously, you know, that's good for us. But I think I can kick it. Pretty much anywhere. I've kicked in a blizzard game before. I've kicked in, in rainy monsoon games. I think I know how to navigate the elements a little bit. Get those in Florida a lot. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I kicked a couple weeks ago and it was a downpour, about half hour. Balls get super heavy. Don't go nearly as far. Of course, it's hard to see the wind and the rain. So I think I've learned to navigate that a little bit, uh, a little bit better than maybe some other people. Um, but anywhere, if you get to the league anywhere, any 32 team, I'm, I'm good to go. So what, how did you get, and I, I think it's a cool story cause I know it, but how did you get your scholarship? Oh, wow. Okay. Do you have enough tape for, yeah, we got it. Okay. We got it. All right. Um, so when I graduated, I had to take a year off, I had some kind of family issues and I wasn't the most recruited guy out of high school. I, we couldn't afford, I come from a very low income kind of family. My parents always did outstanding job at not letting me really know that until I was older. Mm hmm. Um, so I took a year off, kind of helped the family a little bit, went to school and then time's ticking that NCAA clock, you know, and you don't want to be a 40 year old guy in college. Right. So I eventually got hooked up with a kicking coach and got to go to a small school on a partial scholarship in Missouri. I was there for a semester. My mom had like a, had a stroke and my dad had some, some serious internal organ, um, diseases and things like that. So, and it wasn't a good situation for me any, any way there. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the best scenario for me to have played but my family situation obviously was a deciding factor and of course you know majority of my factor of decision so I came home after just a, just a semester there and this was back when the NCAA had the the rule of you had to get your AA degree before you were eligible to play again which I think is the stupidest rule and they just changed that of course the year become eligible they yeah. changed that so for two years I was going to school full-time at Seminole State the local community college and busting my hump getting grades working two full-time jobs, the lifeguard and at the ice rink where I know you from and still training, still finding time to go to planet fitness at three in the morning. Thank God they are 24 hours. <laughs> you know, yeah. I was doing that stuff six days a week for two years, posting, posting videos on YouTube, going to kicking camps, trying to get my name back out there. And that's the hardest part. If you're a guy out of the game and each year, hundreds of kids recruiting class come in, they graduate and they're fresh and people like seeing them. And I'm still trying to compete with these guys and these ESPN Coles camps and doing well and that kind of thing. And, it wasn't, nothing was happening. I wasn't eligible. I finally become eligible talking to, talking to a school here in Florida. Um, and things are going well. Things are like, okay, we dad, we finally did it. We busted it for so long. This is finally coming to fruition. Dad gets cancer, mouth cancer, never, never smoked, never did tobacco, you know, just bad luck. My dad had open heart surgery in high school and, and 
that's kind of the story of, of me as my dad's health issues and how we kind of overcame them as a family and that kind of thing. But didn't end up working out. I stayed home and, and kind of, uh, kind of helped around the house. And my dad and my, my, my dad had a feeding tube cause he couldn't eat anymore. And half his tongue got removed and cancer is so aggressive, man, especially that head and neck cancer is so aggressive. Helped my dad with feeding tube and try to be his nutrition guy, a little dry erase board, you know, right. You know, what have you had today calorie wise? Cause my dad wasn't a big guy and he lost a lot of weight really quickly, but I was working at pizza hut as COVID, COVID comes around and I get furloughed from the rink and I'm um, still posting videos, still trying, you know, working two jobs and stuff. And, uh, dad, my dad's condition worsened. And I think, you know, this is it. I can't play anymore. I just kind of, my last opportunity to kind of, it just kind of came and went right. um, with the school in Florida. So I'm kind of, I have one year left and no one wants a guy who's played one season as a punter and now he's trying to be a kicker. <laughs> be he a has kicker. one year left. No one wants that guy. So it's very hard to market yourself, you know, and get looks. Um, but, you know, they call hospice in for my dad and everyone knows what hospice means in your last, you know, make you comfortable for your last several, a couple of days. And, um, I call it one of my friends, Steven Yaffe, who my kicking coach in Tampa and went out with him and he posted a video on Twitter of me. You know, I said, I got out of the house, man. I need to get out of the house. I need to see some kicking. I need to kick with you or help younger guys, high school guys that you're coaching. I just got out of the house. He posted a video of me punting and got some looks on Twitter and some, there was some recruiting behind my back. I had no idea about. Um, some things that happened that were kind of, you know, miracles of how I got my, got a look from these videos posted and my coaching staff did a background look at me and text my high school coaches and who is this guy? What's his story? What's going on here? How's he available? What's his eligibility? And uh, my dad passed away on July 3rd, just over a year ago. And about a week later, almost exactly, I got a call from a number I don't recognize. I'm on my way to Pizza Hut as a delivery driver, have my little visor on and my little shorts, and you can imagine. Right. It's a good ima- visor. You can imagine. It's it. a good visor. It is Pizza Hut. No one, out, <laughs> no one out pizzas the hut, right? So I'm on my way there. I get a call from a already team. getting sponsors. Uh, I'm telling you, turn the label to camera. I'm, I'm gonna get we're gonna get paid here. Um, but yeah, so I'm on my way to Pizza Hut, and I get a call from a two seven zero area code, and like, where the hell is that? And it's uh, Coach Hood from Murray State, and he's like, Hey, man, I know it's it's a Sunday. I'm with my family. I'll make this quick. Do you want a full scholarship? And the call I waited four years for, my dad and I had busted, you know, so long at, took like a minute and 10 seconds. And I was like, housing, like everything included, everything included, man. Like just, are you, are you committing right now? And I was like, yes. Because <laughs> my, my mom, you know, my dad had passed away a week before. We're moving stuff out of the apartment. We can't really afford it without my dad's, you know, income that he was bringing in. And right. um, so my mom, she's moving back. She moved back with her parents to South Florida. So she had a place to go, and I was kind of like, you know, my life's in Orlando, more or less. I really have nowhere to go besides, like, maybe friends' couches or maybe grandparents', like, spare room, maybe. Like, you yeah. know, just weird, uncomfortable situations. So the fact that I had housing and a place to go for at least a year or two meant the world. I was like, yes, I'm signing right now. Absolutely. And they sent me the electronic document of, of the scholarship, and I was crying. It was one of those moments where my dad, in a roundabout way, was my biggest inspiration and my biggest recruiting guy for me he ended up he ended up finishing the job he ended up job done and getting me a scholarship because you know like i said i in hospice i gotta get out of the house yeah and just so happened to be in a roundabout way my dad you know kind of solidified you know did he did it he did his job so i'm super thankful for everything that happened and the place i'm in now and murray is a beautiful town everyone's so nice you know florida people can be kind of edgy and on edge and annoying Everyone in Murray is super nice and the football team and the coaching staff and our family and coaching staff knows my story as weird, as weird of a long story as it is, you know, they know it. And that's part of the reason why I think why they like me as well as I'm a take no, not take no for an answer guy and, you know, truck is true no matter what. So that's kind of the story of how I got to Murray. Um, being a pizza pizza guy and a zamboni driver pizza guy and a zam you just drove for a living i drove professional drove driver various things Very slow things <laughs> fast th- yeah absolutely so before i want to i want to talk more about the dad stuff because you and i have a, a common a common bond there where you know obviously your dad passed and and it's affected you in in ways that i'm sure you didn't even imagine obviously absolutely. the scholarship coming and my mom fought it around the same time. Thankfully, she beat it, and she's in the clear, and things are awesome. good. Awesome, awesome, but man. Um, yeah. before that, I want to talk about just kind of to to cap off our our football segment. You're going to these camps. You're going against highly recruited individuals. You're going up against hot shot individuals. Where do you? rank in these competitions where do you rank in against guys that you see kicking kicking the ball where 
Aaron wants to go kick the ball on Sundays. Do you think that that's a legitimate thing? Is that something that's it's, absolutely? Are you in the upper one percent of the one percent to be able to I, kick the ball? I would think so. I've there was a, a guy I used to work with in Daytona where NFL guys would come to work with in summertime, mm-hmm. and I've seen NFL guys since I was 17, 18, 19 years old, and I've been right with them ball for ball. You know, that's where I, if I would if I didn't think I was good enough, I probably would have hung it up and been a welder or something. But mm-hmm. I know the talent that I that I have, and I'm only getting better. So that's where I'm like, okay, I don't want to be 35 and, well, what could have been? You know what I mean? So that's why I'm sticking with it. But these camps against these hotshot guys, you know their names, those guys going to Clemson, this guy's going here, this guy's going there. Mm-hmm. I'm always right with them, if not beating them. I've won more camps than I haven't won. So um, it's it's a little nerve-wracking because you see these high tail guys, they walk in with their little Clemson shirts on or whatever school they're going to, and, okay, this guy's good, this guy's the real deal, and my family doesn't have a lot of money and these camps are very expensive. And that's one thing I don't like about the camp circuit is they, they prey on your, they prey on your talent. They promise you the world with, you know, we'll get you here. We'll get you there. We'll get you a visit here. Da, 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 da. It never quite works out. Yeah. Um, these camps are 400 to $500 and we can't really spare that a lot. So my uncle would chip in and help and we'd kind of save up for these things. So there's pressure obviously to perform for your future of your career. But there's also pressure of we just saved for money for months to go to this camp you know, it's like a Charlie and Chocolate Factory situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like that kind of thing. Um, so you perform, you got to perform for, you look up in the stands, your dad up there, okay, I know I've worked so hard and I've trained for this and there's a lot of money. Uh, like, you know what I mean? It's that kind of thing. But I, I think I'm all, I think I'm up there. I definitely think King on Sundays is a possibility. I just got to have a good final season and I, you know, you never know. No, you never know. I'm, I, I mean, I think it's going to happen. I feel, feel good about it. <laughs> I hope so, man. I hope so. But so to go back to the dad thing, one of the things I think, <clears throat> at least in the last two years, three years, four years, it's been coming around that um, mental health is really important. And I feel like that's something that earlier generations, our parents' generations, mental health was kind of a thing that was looked at that was like, you know, you only go to therapy if you're a crazy person. Yep. You only yeah. talk to someone if you're insane. Yep. Like, And to go through what you've gone through First, what can you say helped you most mentally in this time? Because this is something that I'm sure e- even out of the sports realm, people can relate to. And, and you know, you were not in a good place. You were obviously in a bad place because nobody wants to see their parents like that. Absolutely. But what can you attest to first um, being able to, to kind of continue on with life through that it through that that very difficult time sure um my dad was my dad was the toughest guy i've ever met he had gone through open heart surgery all these you know injuries and you know you know uh, kidneys and liver issues and things like that obviously cancer and he always had the superhero aura about him that he'd like beat him come back be fine. Ah, it's fine you know what yeah. i mean not a big deal so yeah not a big deal um but to see my dad would kind of wither away really quickly um was very hard to see and i'm, I'm still in denial i think i'm still in denial about it to be honest with you. But a couple of times this season, I just had all the pressure, the weight of everything on you. And of course, you and your dad together to this journey, you want to obviously show the best you can as like a tribute to him. And obviously for yourself, you put in all these hours and blood, sweat and tears for this. I've had a few breakdowns this year where I called my mom at three, four in the morning and she's doing the same thing I am. We didn't have a chance to mourn together, you know, because I left for training camp two weeks after. Right. And she, we split, you know, and we never chance to really mourn together as a family. We're a very small family, only child. Um, but something that I, I think helped me a lot was talking to people. I, my dad was a tough, a tough dude. And like I said, parents generation, very tough and mental health is, you know, it's a myth. Kids are just being wimps nowadays. And I was like that for a while. Yeah. And then I kind of softened up to that because like I said, my meet my teammates and my best friend, uh, Jeffrey and Lewis and these guys and I don't talk to you. Like, you know, I was never an open up guy, uh, only child, just kind of, internalize everything not yeah. be super emotional but I, I'd, I'd call them and cry and hugging them and 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 it felt really good and now they're with me on this journey as well but obviously continuing what me and my dad started and getting as far as we can get with this and that's been a driving factor in me overcoming just this sadness you know everywhere you look you, know, you, see, you see your dad somewhere and you know you're a keychain that has your dad something that your dad gave you or my dad's watch I wear sometimes and there's you're surrounded by these sad memories a lot um, but yeah, night t- night time when when your friends aren't around is really really hard. A couple of times I had absolute total breakdowns after like a final, close the laptop, 
it was really cold one night, for example, I felt my feet were cold and it reminded me of when my dad, when he, when he had passed, he was very cold to the touch and wrecked me for about three or four days. And, um, so things like that, but family and friends and talking to people and opening up about your feelings, not being Joe tough guy, which I consider myself a pretty tough guy definitely helps a ton, a ton, a ton. And obviously having this dream of playing in the league and getting my mom out of my grandparents' house and get, getting her a, a apartment or a condo or a house or something and paying off my friends like student loan debts and, you know, having a house for myself. I never lived in a house. I've lived in an apartment my whole life because we can't afford a lot of things. That is my dream, and I, I waves. There's good days and bad days, right? There's right. good days with that kind of thing, and um, I miss my dad every single day. I talk to him, you know, driving around or before a game. Bef- night before the first game, I couldn't sleep against UT Martin. I could not sleep. My best friend Jeffrey had came with me at about four in the morning, three or four in the morning, and I had my dad's ashes with me. I, 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 I got to do something really quick, so I drove to the stadium, snuck in the stadium, and I sprinkled my dad's ashes on the the Murray State M at midfield, and then from there I felt calm. The entire time I've played there, every time I go step foot on the field in a game, I've been laser steady. My heart rate doesn't change. Um, so that's a good thing, you know, obviously, to be very low-key. Anxiety, of course, okay, here we go, about to play. But right. you step on the field, and, oh, I'm in my element. I know how to kick a ball and is very calm. So that's, um, yeah, opening up to people and talking and expressing your feelings is something I never thought I'd ever do. I'm, I was like my dad, grit your teeth, trudge on through, be tough guy, and but yeah, definitely talking to people is is way more helpful than you think it is. Do you think that your so you even said it? You think that you're you know you consider yourself to be a fairly tough individual, and I can agree with that. We've played on the same hockey team, but don't you think that this level of of letting people in and letting people go on this journey with you is another form of toughness? Maybe maybe it's a. Tough because I'm exposing myself and becoming vulnerable to people that I, my punter from Australia, you know, he's from Australia, you know, he's not a guy I grew up with. He's not from here. He's not from here, right? He's, he's an amazing guy and he's been with me. He's my holder. He's a punter and a holder. So my, my, my success directly relies on him. It's the only position in sports where your success relies directly on another person. He has to hold the ball in that exact spot with the exact tilt you need, the exact laces and, you know, you trust him with your life. And I've gravitated to him a lot. We gravitated to each other and my friends and my family and people who didn't know my story, uh, people who messaged me on Twitter, you know, I've, 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 you know, have known my, my situation. Maybe it is a form of toughness. Maybe it is, but I had, I had definitely needed a big setback in life to open up. Okay. I need to not hold this in because this sucks. I, I'm texting my mom at three in the morning. We're just preaching to the choir. You know, yeah. we're both sad. We both lost, this, lost the same guy. You know, we, you know, that relationship is kind of the same. So, but talking to other people about it and having them be there, people are way more nicer, way nicer and way more responsive and receptive than you think they are. Especially as a guy, you think, you know, guys are really wimp. You're really, really, come on, yeah. come on. You play football, dude. You play hockey, come on. <laughs> but they're way more nice than you think. Their hearts are bigger than you think they are. And that's definitely been a life-changing thing. I can tell my story as much as I can now in case it helps somebody or helps me even talk about it. Right. It helps me get over these things, talking to people. And um, I talked about it on, on a on a radio show before and just anything I can do to talk about it more and, and helps myself, but also bring people on this journey with me. And I wrote a bunch of things on my cleats a couple weeks ago. I posted something on Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat. If you want to be on my cleats this season, let me know. And I had, but I wrote my cleats this year, like a uh, graffiti in Brooklyn. <laughs> I mean, I just have initials and in everywhere because the left cleat, I have people who have passed away who have been close to me. My dad, my grandpa, my friend, Corey, who passed away in the Pulse nightclub, people I've worked with who have passed away that have been close to me. And that's my left cleat. And I think it's a little dark. So I need to have, I have uh, my right cleat. My kicking cleat has my positive people who are, who are still with me. And um, you're on there. I'm on you're there. You're on there. PP's on, on, there. on there. Yeah. He's on there. I, I, and I don't know if you've even asked about it, but I put you on there because I know, I know <laughs> you and I go back. So I, I definitely think having people, the more people, the army, army you can build for yourself is definitely very helpful. Well, it seems like you've surrounded yourself with a lot of positivity too. Is that something that you would attest to this new vulnerability is it something that you've you've kind of helped change your mindset and position you in a better spot i think so or maybe i just unlocked a thing inside me that i didn't know i quite had i wish i make the me- best at everything i try to laugh at everything like mm-hmm. even my dad passed away i was like dad the bills are gonna go to super bowl this year come on. like we just got stefan Diggs. like how are you passing <laughs> away and like you know i just joke around like even just a coping mechanism right? right my mom's the same way but yeah i definitely you know i think me talking more and, and changing things and Unlocking that little part is such a, a critical thing in my development as a person. You know, right. I think I was very 
laughing and outgoing and talking to people, but I will never talk about feelings. I never talk about super deep stuff. We talk about beavis and butthead type stuff, you know, joking around, poop jokes, stuff like that. But now the fact that it can go on a deeper level and actually make connections with your heart instead of your, your funniness is definitely you know, a thing that I've been working on. It's been helping me a lot. And it's been just a, a, a good thing. I've seen myself develop as a better person, I think. It's made me a better person. I sympathize better with people now. In October, whenever there's breast cancer awareness stuff and there's pink towels and stuff, uh, you know, I'm always like, yeah, all right, enough of the pink already. Yeah. Now I get it. Now it's one of those things where I understand what cancer does to people. I get it, you know? Me and my dad went to a Sabres lightning game, and it just so happened to be Stand Up to Cancer Night. We had not picked this. Sabres are in town. Everyone has purple. I fight for this person. I fight for my dad. I mean, I okay, I get it now. This big ceremony takes a half hour and delays the game. I used to complain about, I get it. We're all kind of affected in one way or another. Opening my heart to that and sympathizing with that has made me, I think, a better person entirely. So what was what was the highlight of your season? What was the, the thing that you looked at and you were like, Dad, and what was the thing you kind of wish that he was there to celebrate with you? They kind of both kind of the same the same thing. March 28th of this year against Eastern Illinois. Um I had the game of my career. You know, if, if I if I got my legs broken that night, I'd be happy with it because of how <laughs> that game went. My uncle came down, my dad's brother, who's been absolutely unbelievable throughout my entire journey, helping fund me to go to camps. And I, I live with him now during summertime. He's a spare room. And him and, and him and his wife have just been unbelievably, you know, helpful to me in many different ways. Um, but he comes down, he picks just a random game on the schedule to come down to, works with his work schedule. And it's a day I... I uh, I, th- I went five for five with the 58 yard field goal through a two point conversion pass, which what kicker does and, and some crazy fake extra point scheme that should have never worked. <laughs> and it worked. And we, co- we have a punt return that goes into the three yard line. Coach goes, we score, we're running that play. And I was like, are we <laughs> like, is this going to work? And this sure is enough, Madden. You yeah, know that, right? Yeah, this, is, this, is, this is not going to work. <laughs> and it ended up working. And it was one of those plays where my, my dad, my, my dad's brother, who is, they were so tight. Both football-minded people, the closest thing I have to my dad, comes and sees this game, and it's just a record-setting game and an amazing game in my career. And I look, and I'm like, I look up in the stands, I see him, and I'm like, oh, this, this is happening. Like, this is everything I've worked for is happening on a day that he came. And it's one thing for him to watch ESPN Plus and text me after the game, oh, wow, crazy game, live to FaceTime later. Yeah. But for him to be there and, and to hang out with him and go to dinner after and talk about it and just geek out and head in the hotel and re-watch the game and, and geek out about it and... At the end of that game, and my day was done after that. After that throw, my day was done. You know, not any time left. I sat down on the sideline. I, I teared up on the sideline because it was one of those I wish my dad was here to see this. I felt him with me. I felt calm the whole day, but I wish he was here. I wish he was with my uncle. I wish I can give him a hug before pregame warmups. You know, all right, we made it. Let's go. Let's have a good one. And I wish I could hug him after. And that's something that's gonna be. I think the farther I go with my career and playing in the NFL, whenever that happens. At, I'm going to have to deal with this on a much bigger scale. Oh, right. We're in the NFL now, dad. Like, whoa, I wish you were here. <laughs> like, I really wish you were here to see this. I know he's here watching. And of course he's, you know, that, that whole thing. But mm-hmm. that day was one of those days where it was a crazy wind day and it was hard to play wind. And there were certain things I had to do to adjust for wind with tilting the ball certain ways and manipulating ball flights and all kinds of things to, to have the day I had. And I was like, okay, thank you for getting, thank you dad for helping me with, being calm enough to make these adjustments. Anytime right. you just get panic and just, I just kick the ball, hope it goes in. But to be calm enough, I felt the calmness. And I really wish my dad was there for that game um, really, really badly. But that's that's one of the motions that I was cheering up on the sideline. My, my teammates go over to hug me. What's, hey, what's the matter, dude? And I was like, just wish my dad was here. You're good. Like, it's not, I'm not, nothing's, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> oh, no. I just scored 17 points by myself. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I'm good. Yep. But <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm cool. I just need a minute. I just need to understand and look around. I really, that's the that thing, too. That I've, I've made a point to any, any new stadium I go to or any game I play in to take a moment at some point in the game and look around and appreciate the atmosphere I'm in. Because not a lot of people get to this level. Not a lot of people even play college football past high school. There's like some really ridiculously small percentage that does this. And to have a day like I had, to look around at my Lewis, my holder, my long snapper Chandler, and my teammates that are who I, I would die for these guys and have them with me on this moment, of my, this pinnacle at this point you know, of my career. My uncle there, of course, and I, it was very absorbent. You know, I had a moment against a couple of weeks earlier in the season, my first ever career field goal that I made in my life. And I told Lewis, my equipment guy, he's not there anymore, so I can say the story. <laughs> but I told him, I said, I'm stealing the ball. 
I worked so hard for my first ever field goal. I'm keeping that damn ball. And him and Lewis, me and Lewis, my holder, worked it out to where the second I kick it, high five, Lewis, go. He's, he's faster <laughs> than me. You haul ass, get the ball. He sees a video of him. You see him in the scissor lift camera, him running towards the end zone to get the ball. Um, but I made sure I, I absorbed the moment after and during a kickoff, the ensuing kickoff after the play, I was taking my steps over, looking around, okay, I'm in a stadium in a D1 school in Missouri. And, whoa, this is really amazing. And, you know, I've been at a point to absorb things now. I never would have done that. I would have just been pedal to the metal, kick the ball on the sideline, talk the crap until your next play. But I've made a chance to appreciate where I'm at. And my dad helped me to get here. And I every time I look around, I'm like, all right, dad, all right, this is awesome. I know you're seeing through what I'm seeing. This is great. Well, I think it's it's really impressive that you were able to put together this season and do all of the things that, that you set out to do in – a couple weeks span of your dad passing like that. The ability to be able to do that is not something I think a lot of people in the world can, can do. Is there anything you would attribute other than obviously you were saying openness being with, you know, treating your teammates like family and really embracing that family culture. Is there anything else you would attribute being able to kind of figure out how to do this the right way? to other than those things or is there you know obviously the change in culture the yeah. you know like like you said the, the teammates and, and embracing them as brothers instead of just as teammates um is there anything else you would be able to attribute or or a piece of knowledge or something that you learned that you'd be able to pass on to someone who may be going through something similar i would definitely say figure out what your true motivation is here because my motivation like i said get my mom a place to live that's not in her her parents spare bedroom you know it's weird for her to have been married to my dad for my dad passed for the day after their like 33rd anniversary or 30th anniversary like so he made time. it he made it one more day and you know that's one of, i don't know one of those things you know what i mean to get her a place to live you know it's weird to go out and marry somebody and all of a sudden you're back with your parents it's like you're on a long vacation that was my my, my main focus that's still my main focus so to to come home at night Turn the lights off, turn the phone off, and lay in bed and stare at the ceiling. Okay, what is my what is my real motivation here? Obviously, get an education. Obviously, you know, fulfill what I've been wanting to do. But you really have to. I understand where you want to be and where you want to go, right? So if your main focus is to shoot for the stars, it's going to help you because you're okay. Nose to the grindstone. I had, a few, I had a few practices when I first got there, where the holding situation wasn't great. You know, it was a, a long snapper was my holder. He never held before. He did as best he could but that's not that exact precise thing that a holder and kicker need. Right. And I had a few awful practices when I first got there. So I was saying about this pressure of the watch these senior video and you can talk this big game and you see, you see these long field goals, but okay, now you, you crap the bed in your first couple of practices. It's like, oh, like this is not good. Okay, where are we at now? I broke down a couple of times calling my mom. Mom, I don't know. I might have to come home. Like this is not, this is not going well. Like I, I'm not kicking like myself. I'm kicking like a middle schooler out here embarrassing myself for lack of a better word but to to understand where you need to be and where you want to go and look deep within yourself reflect a lot about yourself and your journey to get here and it helps you give me give me strength okay i've been through i've been through some hard some tough crap you know what i mean now is my chance to to make it all worth it to make everyone who had taken time out of their day uh to watch me kick or my family who have, who have donated money to help me go to camps it's time Okay, you've seen me kick or I've sent you videos every couple weeks. Here we go. That has been my biggest thing as I reflected on myself and people should reflect on themselves what you really want to get out of this because that will help you be strong because whatever you're super deep passionate about is going to help you get through a lot of crap. Mm -hmm. So I'm obviously super passionate about going to the NFL. It's the only thing I want to do. I'm going to school um, sports medicine and, and physical therapy and um, that sort of thing is like what my backup plan is. But my A1 passionate plan is NFL. So I, I'm going to deal with all this crap because I know where I want to go. So that's, I guess, for, I'm not sure if I answered your question, but to no, be super you did. passionate. It's, it just is, seems is like thing. direction. It seems like you need you have to, to have yourself. a super hard path that you've been wanting to go down and you can overcome a lot of crap that way. That's been my biggest thing is understanding where you want to go and how you need to get, do to get there, what you need to do to get there and then make it happen. It's awesome. So let's fast forward. Let's fast forward to, I don't know, let's say May. And Aaron had a great season at Murray. Everything was great. What is what does next year look like for you? What are you? What are the hopes? What are the dreams? What are we? 
What are we looking at? What dates do we have circled? What games? Oh, what? I have a few. Okay. Uh, I have a few. So I've been nursing on an injury um, that, I, that I had since like week two of this last season. I had to sprain my ankle making a tackle early in the season, and I had just been dealing with it and taking ibuprofen. Surprised my kidneys and liver didn't explode with how much I was taking. But I, I the journey I had to get here, mm-hmm. I can't let a stupid injury hold me back. You know what I mean? So, uh, so a couple times I was limping from kick to kick. I, it was brutal. My Achilles was all messed up. The back of my ankle was all jacked up and bruising in the back side of my leg. I was like, okay, after the season, I'm going to take time to rehab this. And get, I'm still kind of dealing with it a little bit, mm. but I dealt that the entire season. Rehab beyond the mend for training camp. Training camp is a rigorous, a, re- a rigorous thing. However, we're looking for several dates. Week two, they're all important for me, obviously. Right. But there's a couple games that I'm Mark obviously you highlighting. Circle. You gotta circle. Absolutely. Week two against Cincinnati at University of Cincinnati. Apparently, that's a really loud powerhouse, you know, stadium, and they're a good team. So there's gonna be a lot to to overcome that obstacle of them being a really good team. But playing in a giant packed stadium, mm. I haven't done that yet because COVID, we had our took that yeah yeah took that away from us. And we also, October 30th, I've been telling all my friends this, come down to Tennessee, come down to, we play Tennessee State in Nissan Stadium where the Tennessee Titans play in downtown Nashville because it's a home game for Tennessee State and something happened with their scheduling of their facility. So Murray State is going to be playing in the Tennessee Titans Stadium on the NFL field. That's amazing. That's awesome. That's so cool. I'm trying to have all my friends come for that game. Day before Halloween, you know, stay after. We'll hang out on Halloween Day and hang out and that kind of thing. But those are definitely a few dates that I have circled. Just big monumental moments of NFL Stadium. Holy crap. Get as much videos as I can. Oh, yeah. That'll be a fun one to when you're when you're getting ready to kick off. Like that moment oh, that absolutely. you take to just be like, oh, I could just like do this for. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, you drive by that right on the way to and from Florida. Nissan Stadium is right by the interstate. So you drive by it in downtown Nashville and you see it in all its glory. You have a picture of Derrick Henry on the side and Tannehill and these, these NFL guys. You're like. I'll be in you one day. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'll be in you literally October 30th. I have a date now. It's marked. So I know exactly when. I know exactly when. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if the Bills play before or after that date, but Josh Allen, I'm going to leave a little note for you. Stick a little sticky note somewhere. Look for the sticky note. Look for the sticky note. Yeah, it's a big fan. It's not, not creepy. I'm not Stan from Eminem. You know, I'm not dear Josh Allen. You know, I wrote you, but you still ain't calling. No, but um, definitely those dates are going to be really cool for me to have come from community college in a small school in Missouri and – Never quite think I'd be in a big stadium and doing these cool things from a packed house. Um, that is a moment for me. Where I go, okay, this is really, really cool. I legitimized myself in a big time scenario and I got to perform in there. And that's going to be the thing is performing in front of those people. So we'll see if I can. Well, I'm going to do it. Not even we'll see. I'm going to do it. Well, and then what what does it look like? What does your schedule look like postseason in hopes of being able to get some eyes on you and maybe start kicking for some teams, maybe sure. get some tryout? What is that? What does that look like? So I'm kind of in a cool spot um, in terms of eligibility. Um, this is my senior year on the field because my, my, my clock has had started a, a, a while ago. But I'm in a spot where since I've had the hardships that I've had, the NCAA um, has what's called a hardship thing. So I can be granted an extra year um, if I so choose. So I'm going to play my season, do the best I can. I'm going to file for another year um, you know, and, and try to get one more season if I can. Obviously, you know, paid for a school and, very th- and it'll still have a living situation that I'm comfortable with. Playing for a team I love, for a coach, a coaching staff that I'm, you know, enthralled with and, and I love, and I'm gonna try to get one more season in Murray if I can. Mm-hmm. Um, however, they, of course, they can say, you know what, nah, and they can say no and deny it. If that's the case, then it goes to, um, you know, obviously, if you get drafted, that's great. I've come from a small school, so it probably won't happen. I got to be realistic, but also understand, since I'm being realistic, where I can what I have to do to be, you know, I'm, oh, I'm going to get drafted, you know, I have a draft party and have my friends come around. Yeah. Fifth round, fifth round. Yeah. You're from Murray state. You know, you don't play in front of a lot of eyes like you would at Clemson or Alabama, unless you have just some unbelievable year. You have one hundred for a hundred from 50 yards out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there'll probably be a, a an, an undrafted free agent route and try that camp circuit and be a, um, you know, a mini camp rookie camp guy and try to turn heads with, with my leg strength. And that's going to be probably what is going to, what's going to happen. But I still have another year in, in a D1 weight room to get even stronger, um, to get even in better shape, um, and just you know help work on the tools I need and work with my with my people and to get better. So if I get granted an extra year for NCAA for the hardship stuff and filing the appeal with that, fantastic. Um, you know all the better. If not, then obviously you know here we go, jump jump head first. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, sir, I want to thank you very much. For coming and hanging out Thanks, and, and kind of telling telling your story. I look forward to 
sharing this and, and getting as many people as humanly possible to listen to it because you, sir, are really someone who has, against all odds, gotten yourself to where to where you want to be. And I think that that's so impressive. I think it's so crazy that every time the world kind of threw a punch at you, you, you just got back up. And I, I think that that's awesome. And I definitely think that that, you know, that goes to how you were brought up and how you were raised. I and appreciate that so much, man. It, it's cool to it's cool to have a guy like you who, who has known my journey and has been with it. You know, I mean, you've been in real time through these things. And, and one thing I forgot to mention a couple of years ago, I had double hip surgery. My hips had been blown out and I had them get repaired and one more thing to overcome and rehab myself i didn't have a you know he didn't have insurance so i paid for insurance for a month got an mri all oh, your hips are messed up okay we need surgery didn't get pt at the end of that month insurance is done rehab yourself one more thing to overcome but the fact that you have been there and, and my family and friends have been there in real time through this whole thing you know we're just getting started we're just getting started there's gonna be some really cool things about to happen um i feel it but yeah i appreciate you having me on obviously and i appreciate the support that you've been giving me and you're always messaging me on Instagram and stuff and, and congratulating me and, and following my season, you know, now no one really cares about kicker seasons, right? Unless, you know, unless you know somebody who is one. So I really appreciate the fact that you've been so outspoken in your support of me. It means a lot. And you're a great friend of mine. You're a family at this point, man. It's, I, I can't thank you enough, honestly. Yeah, yeah man, it's appreciated. And uh, we, we, all of the four viewers of the Junk Drawer Show and uh, hopefully more people that'll actually come in and listen to your story. But uh, everyone will look forward to, to seeing you kind of kick some ass at Maria this year. So Absolutely. thank you, sir. Much appreciated. No, thank and, you so uh, much. Guys, thank you so much. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. We will have some more content for you guys. And uh, take it easy. We will talk, uh, talk to you guys next time.